was on the validated merge, or the what's, what's otherwise known as the pre-tested commits. Um, so, so here, I guess the so motivation for this feature is, so is quite simple. It's, it's that you know I, I, I just don't want to run tests on my computer at all. I mean, we got all these servers that's so power, so much more powerful, and we have this feeble laptop uh, that that's just not it's just not capable of running all this stuff. I mean, my computer has more important things to do, like running IDEs. I mean, gosh, all these Java IDEs like need crazy amount of memory. So. Um, so we want, you know, we want more workload to go to Jenkins. And then when we think about it today, it, when you use CI servers, it actually encourages you more to run the test locally because we want to make sure that your stuff isn't breaking the bills. So in a way, it's kind of backward. That is, we want people to be focusing more on things that only they can do, like coding and debugging and uh, shooting the breeze, and then let the servers do what it's good at. Um, and then the Gary, I think, is it has been mentioned a number of times, which is a great feature, a great software and all. But I, in in some circumstances, I find it not quite, not quite, uh, you know, u usable. So the one of the situation is that the Gary wants to uh, take over the master repository. So it wants to uh, control the access to every inbound uh, push from the older developers. So if you're like just one member in a bigger team and then you want to use something like this, well, to use Gary, you have to sell this to the whole team before you could start using it. Like, whereas I like, you know, the one of the, whereas one of the approaches that the Jenkins get introduced to lots of organization uh, is that someone can just install on their own and then start using it without telling anyone else. And next thing you know, the other people would like it and then it kind of gets it from there. So I, I want something similar for this thing. I don't want to affect the, how the larger team is working on. I'm not good at convincing other people. So I just want to be able to do it and be done with it. Um, and then the other thing about Garrett is, I mean, it's, it's sort of, because it's primarily a code review tool, so it's keen on a, testing every single commit. So if you have like a branch that contains a dozen changes, and then you know, it's, in, in the course of the development of the branch, you might make some some sort of wandering around and eventually it came to the state that it's ready to be more. So you're not particularly interested in making sure that every step of the way passes all the tests. That's, that's a bit silly. Um, so as long as the final product is good, right, you don't want to see the sausage making process, as they say. Um, and then in the last, I guess, you know, so far we in, in where we work in Jenkins project, we, we haven't done, really done the code reviews. I guess we just didn't have enough people in in it, and then people working on different time zones kind of makes it difficult to do the code reviews and so on. So instead, what I thought I could do was to, you know, turn Jenkins into a Git server, right? So um, the I'm sitting on the left, and then I'll push my changes instead of to the real upstream master repository, but into this intermediate gate repository that is Jenkins, and then uh, the, the Jenkins should pick, pick that up and then merge the current state of the tip from the upstream, and then it runs a test, and then if it looks good, then Jenkins should then further push that into the upstream. And then I can obviously always fetch changes directly from the upstream. And so in this way, every change that I'm pushing to the upstream is coming through Jenkins, so it's all tested and all, but the other people wouldn't have to, you know, necessarily have to change the model, but then and hopefully once you get this going, the other people would see the value in it and then switch over. So uh, just to look at this from different perspective, I guess in general, your, the commit graph could look something like this. Um, so, the, you know, so this is your master branch, and then at one point, you start working on this locally. So while you're working on it, in general case, the other people have done more commits to the master, so they make some progress. And then so at the point when you're ready, when you're declaring that the change is done, you know, you could be in this little bit of diverged state. So what you do is you push your changes to the Jenkins, and the Jenkins is going to speculatively merge those things, because this is what's going to eventually run on the master, right? The merge between your change and then the then tip in the, master, the, then tip in the upstream. And then it's going to test that change, and if it looks good, and then it pushes it, so the uh, tip of the master in upstream moves up. So that's the kind of expected work. So does that, does that, is that clear enough? Sometimes all these commits and merges and so on kind of makes it hard to explain it, but this is the idea. So, and then, you know, you can in the meantime, well, the firmware is doing all that work. You can keep, you can move on and keep working on additional changes. 
based on the assumption that the change is going to pass, which is hopefully like 80% correct. Or, um, and then if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, work, you can come back and then you know, you do it from there. You can more debase from the upstream and so on and so forth. So the idea again is that you just keep on hacking and then you let the server do the test asynchronously and when it passes, you, it lands on the master. But that happens sometime later that you don't really care about. Yeah? So that's the idea. Um, so the implementation of it is the, in this Jenkins Enterprise like that is that we did this. And this is actually the engine that's running build, behind the build hive. When we test pull requests and so on, this is exactly what it's doing. Um, so it implements the, we, we implement the HTTP transport and then SSH transport um, in Git. And then so we use the JGit embedded inside Jenkins to provide the server functionality. And I'll show this in the demo, but there's a little bit of magic around how it handles refs so that you can push it like you're actually pushing it to the real stream but but it's actually not doing that until your changes pass the test and then we add the whole kind of bunch of tags and so on so that when the test fails you know sometimes you can if you want some so let's say you know if we let's say if this fails and then you want someone else to look at that they can pull from the jenkins to get this change and then they can commit the fix and then push that into upstream and so on. Right, so those things is possible. So to demo this, um, back to Unix world. Um, so let me start this demo instance. Um, so here I created a two uh, two project. Uh, I'm sorry, two workspace. Because, so I'm simulating the, the guy in the blue prompt is me, the sloppy programmer, and then the guy in the red prompt is Alice, the uh, the, uh, the programmer with more discipline. Yeah. So I, because I wanted to show how things look like from those two different people's perspective, and I first created a local repository. So let me uh, clone that into. Um, a validated merge demo or something. So you know, so that's so ultimate upstream repository in this case is just in uh, uh, in this my local system. So and then here, so first I'm going to set up a job in Jenkins, um, which I guess I've already done. Uh, the only trick, well, so let me show it. Let me show you how it's configured. Um, so the, it's, check, it's configured to check out from this Git repository that we have locally, uh, the model ant project.git, and then this is the ant project, so I'm invoking ant to test that, and then that's it. Um, and the only trick here is that I add this enable git validated more support, and then that's, that makes this whole thing work. So uh, once you check that box, you get this Git repository for validated more. Then this is where um, the, it explains what you can do. So the first, I need to add Jenkins as my remote repository. So I'll copy that command. Um, oops. Supposed to copy that, but I guess for whatever reason that's not doing it. So let me let me. Uh, Yeah, so I, I add that as a remote, and then let me make some changes that actually break this stuff. And then I'll just push that into the master. So the, the Jenkins would say that the master is actually pushed, accepted all right, and this is a ref that's created. Um, and then if you go up here, um, it has already I think it, well, did it already run? Uh, yeah, it has already run, and um, it failed the build because the, you know, the mock-up was incorrect and so on. So, but at this point, if I switch back to Alice and then um, pull from origin, um, she hasn't changed, the, she hasn't seen the programmatic commit that I just made, that, that one that broke it, because the Jenkins was able to prevent that from going upstream. Um, and then, now coming back to me, I can, I guess, the, uh, report this programmatic commit, and then push to Jenkins again. Uh, well, the other thing I could show, I guess, is 
um, if you go to this field, you'll see that if someone wanted to get this change into their own workspace and then look at that, they can do so by running this command. Yeah? So if, you know, if someone dumped the code and then like, head to the vacation, then they can, someone else can come in and fix it up. Right, so, but here I wanted to so come back to me and then I'm pushing another change that's going to fix it. Um, and then another, oops, and then another build had happened and then that was pushed upstream. So if I go back to Alice, someone that's not using this whole stuff and then prove from the origin, you will see all the change that was just made between this commit push. I mean, the, let me also show the diff. Yeah, the uh, fixing fixing these regressions, and then just a sim simple, I mean, single one go. Um, and with the parameterized, if the build is, um, I'm sorry, if the build supports concurrent executions, uh, here execute concurrently, then multiple people can push in all these kind of changes that can take, say, hours to verify, and they can still, all of them can run in parallel, and then in the order they have finished, they would come in. So. I guess I, I, I kind of like that you don't you don't have to do this uh, the get it trick of the push uh, sending get it you do um, something like refs for master so you don't have to do it here that you'd be just you know, be just pushing master uh, as if you are doing the real real upstream push right this is how you normally do it this is the only change you need to make um, so that's. That's that. Um, I'd like to you know, deploy this to Debug Cloud and some other places where we can have more people use it. But that's what I've been, uh, that's what I added, I guess. So yeah, it's available today, actually. It will be just released today. So that's the other thing I wanted to show. Um, I don't know, I guess I was curious to hear from people using Garrett or people thinking about using Garrett that how this compares and all. Any any thoughts on this? So that is that a plugin? Yeah, it's a plugin. Yeah. Is it only available on copies, or is it? So right now it's only shipped as a part of the Jenkins Enterprise, so it limits the audience. So the uh, the, the thing that I wanted to do is to deploy it on Debug Cloud, where you have more users. But yeah. Does it only work with Git? Yeah. Yes. This is very much Git specific. Like, do you have something else in mind, subversion? Yeah. So there's a different plugin inside. And this one is in an open source that that's something similar on subversion, but it just doesn't. I mean, the subversion being a centralized system, it just doesn't provide you the same kind of workflow. But you can do something similar. That is, people just commit to their own branch, and then Jenkins it, make sure that everything works before merge it to the upstream. Yeah. But after this is done, we can push it to us again after. Hmm? This is temporary anyway. After this is done, you can push it to SVM. After this, you can. P yeah, yeah, okay. So that's interesting. So I guess you're thinking of something like uh, bridging this with Git yeah, SVM. Yeah, it's temporary. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's interesting. Although at that point, like, yeah, I guess it's conceivable. Yeah. I, yeah. But personally, I'm just not so much into subversion anymore. So I, I <laughs> kind of stopped caring. But. <laughs> Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So I don't know what was it useful? Was it what? what, what? All right. Well, if there is nothing else that the, um, uh, if there is no more question, I guess we will we will call it a wrap. Thank you very much.